guest today, Chuck. So we should tell everybody to sit up straight and put their hands in their lap. And That's well. right. Uh, we're uh, we every every so often Aceware sponsors a general interest webinar, kind of for the good of the industry, and this happens to be one of those. We'll be talking about search engine optimization. And our featured guest is a repeater, Daryl Clark of Daryl Clark Associates. And Daryl has done one of these for us. Oh gosh, Daryl, it's been five, six, seven years ago. And so yeah, we're bringing him back. Years ago, yeah. It's been a while, been a while. And so uh, Daryl was the vice president of online marketing with Gatlin, uh, which was then uh, became part of ed to go and was a sales manager for ed to go and was responsible for really building that part of the business. Uh, in terms of SEO optimization in that competitive area. And today uh, is an independent consultant uh, focusing on lead generation and SEO. And he also does, and we've, we've been talking about this, uh, his company provides support for uh, web, uh, responsive web design work on your website. <clears throat> and one of the things you'll talk about is the uh, mobile-friendly websites and how Google now deals with that in the ranking. So, Daryl, uh, it is a pleasure to have you back. Daryl is a personal friend. We've been in this business a long time, and it's good to reconnect. And I will let you um, take the podium. So, take it away. Great. Uh, good morning, everybody. I hope everybody's doing well. Uh, don't expect a presentation to be uh, really long. Uh, and basically, we're going to cover these certain things. Hang on, I'm trying to uh, move my PowerPoint. There we go. Uh, I need to check my screen a little bit here. How looking can I good. minimize looking, this? Yeah, we can it's see your full screen. Little, sorry. Now, we're, we're running, seeing this. See. All right, sorry. All right. The goal today is to educate you about what Google is showing in their search results and also why and plus a brief history of uh, important algorithm changes. And then I think uh, to learn what you can apply to your content pages that can improve your rankings at Google. And I think we want to take the last 10 or 15 minutes to uh, take some real world examples. So for example, if you aren't sure if your site has a good, what we call on-page optimization or, or good SEO, we might um, take a few volunteers and uh, I will take a look at the pages live on a browser here and uh, kind of show everybody what opportunities there are for improvement. And we're going to give an example here during the presentation. So with that said, I'm going to go ahead and proceed. Very good. So what is search engine optimization? Uh, probably it's, a, it's, it's also known as SEO, and I think it's a very confusing term. Uh, but in my mind, very simply put, SEO is making sure the pages of your program are designed properly to trigger relevance from the search engines and drive qualified visitors to your course landing pages and other internal content. It's that simple. One of the things that's interesting to understand is, you know, everybody always talks about Google and whether Google's important, what about Yahoo, and what about this, and what about that. Well, most SEO presentations in fact, all SEO presentations I've done for the last 10, 11, 12 years have focused on Google primarily because Google dominates the market for search. Uh, for des the desktop market, Google commands at least 70%. And you can see the various other breakdowns that uh, other search engines offer. And I think that one of the misleading statistics is they don't show about secondary search. If, you, if people can't find something on MSN or, or I'm sorry, Bing or Yahoo, uh, they tend to use global, uh, Google. So my experience over the years back when I worked with Gatlin, uh, when we had number one rankings for pharmacy technician course and pharmacy technician course online, and we had them for all three search engines, for every 100 visitors we'd get from Google, we would get about seven from Yahoo and four from uh, Bing. Well, at that time it was uh, MSN, but now it's probably reversed. For every 100 you get at Google, you're, you're not going to get more than eight or nine from uh, the other search engines or, or combined uh, 16 or, or 17. So Google really dominates. So whenever we have a presentation on SEO, 
I really focus on what is it you can do to impact your rankings at Google because the most likely scenario is you're still going to end up getting decent rankings at, at Bing and Yahoo. And by the way, Bing and uh, Yahoo, Yahoo is now run by Bing, so the research results are almost identical at uh, Bing and Yahoo. Anyway, uh, desktop market share, Google commands a lot. Uh, more important today, uh, moving forward as, as search changes, uh, mobile devices market share, Google has a whopping 92%. So uh, whether it's an Android or tablet, uh, Google is literally dominating the mobile search market. So we have a question. Mobile searches as a percentage of searches. Uh-oh. We have a poll. My, my monitor went out. No, that's yeah. Lori's taking control, Daryl, so that's oh, Lori's okay. taking control. All right. <laughs> okay. You're okay. I'm like, oh. Well, they don't, ah. they, I, I, nobody knows I lost my laptop last night. So. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Daryl is working on a borrowed laptop, so again, he's a little nervous here. So. so if you would please indicate what you think the answer is here, what percentage of searches are done on mobile devices? So you just pick one. So this ought to be a quick one, guys. Let's let's on delay, on delay. Let's let's uh, pick pick a number and vote. What do you think, Laura? Laura, give us a countdown. Wait for about five more seconds because four, for about three, three, two, one. And here are our results. All right, all right, uh, Daryl. Well, what's the answer? Let's turn it back to you. Okay. Well, what, what does the poll say? Oh, the poll was 79% um, uh, did say it was more than 50%. So there was just a smattering of the others. So it appears that most of people got it right. So excellent. Well, and that is that is certainly the case right now. Uh, I can't see my screen though on this side. Um, Let's see, Lori, if you you should have your I think you're back into control and it would be if you're minimized on your on your taskbar. Also Daryl's working with eight and he's just been working with seven. So uh we see your screen uh on the okay. presentation. You should got it minimized in one of the Uh oh. Hidden. I'm I'm afraid my laptop is um going to sleep. Uh, try it. <laughs> try tapping. Try tapping. No, we, we, no, no more. No more polls. Um, no more yeah, polls. Um, it's getting back. Making you the presenter. Let's see. Can you? Does Alt Tab work on an eight? Maybe we get some tech support from folks here who might be running eight on this here. Yeah, now, my, we, my screen is showing my brand, but it's not showing the presentation. Uh, it's, uh, it it's 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 coming along. Hang on a second. There we go. Give it about another. Give it about another minute. Sorry, everybody. So it may have gone. So the timeout. The timeout may have gone. Yeah, okay, it, going once, the twice. Timeout went. And you getting closer? I am. Unfortunately, yes, I appear to be getting closer. Give it about thirty seconds. I remember All earlier right. today I experienced. Yeah. This. Um, in terms of the, yeah, I think the answer isn't Daryl as we were going to was like 52%. One of the most recent uh, percentages was 52% of the searches on um, on a, on a flat, on a smartphone are are coming or Google searches are coming from a smartphone or mobile device. So again, I think most of you nailed that um, as far as uh, your your answer on that. So. All right, we're still seeing uh, the last poll or the last slide of yours, Daryl. Are you back to where you That's you're on control? So you you can actually see my. I screen? can see that that last slide before we went to the poll and cut back and forth. Um, well, unfortunately, uh, I'm, my screen is not showing it, so I was a little afraid this might occur today because I'm completely unfamiliar with, uh, with eight this. here. Let's see. We've got well, we Lori's got the presentation. So why, why don't you run the presentation and I, I'm pretty much and you narrate it then. All right, mind. Lori, if you take control back, give Lori a second. Uh, all right, folks, time out for just a second. Lori's going to fire up the fire up, fire it up, and get to that, and then Daryl will. 
you should be able to um, should be able to tie into that. All right, now we're at the main yep. panel. Lori's bringing up Lori. And can you see the main panel there, um, uh, Daryl? Almost. Hang on, it's doing strange things here. Very strange things. So, in terms of all right, now the go to meeting. Uh, if you can get to your taskbar again, I, I, I'm not a set, an eight user. Also, get to your taskbar. Yeah, bar. It, uh, unfortunately, now I'm having a problem just logging into the darn computer. So go ahead and just do the presentation. I've got it memorized. So all right, very uh, good. So Lori, go me, ahead tell and me uh, tell me what we're just on, and I will. Lori, I'll let it. you um, advise there. All righty, we are still on the poll slide. And so I'm moving on to Google's impact on SEO. SEO, and this is the blended panda penguin. Yes, uh, Google's impact on SEO has been absolutely huge. And if you go back uh, to the history of, of of where everything started, about eight years ago, everything started with uh, Google Universal Search, and then it went into uh, Google. Uh, penguin, I believe, or is it panda or penguin pa first? Pa panda, panda, panda. Then, then penguin. Then right. uh, Google knowledge, knowledge, Google knowledge graph. graph, and then the news. Correct. News, right? In the news. In and the news. Last was but not I... least, last but not least, Google mobile search. Right, right. Mobile get, and I love that. I love that. So these right. are equivalent and to that, upgrades. That's actually what they call. That's Google? what they call it. They call it Google Mobile Getting. Excuse me. Mobile Getting. Wow. And these are and, basically. And these are equivalent to upgrades for for Google. Or, for well, the there, these were major major changes in in Google. In particular, uh, if we go, if we go at uh, the first one, and the first one again is the Google Universal Search. Right. If you go back about eight years ago, uh, the, you know all you saw was the normal search results. But then Google added uh, uh, the, the tab for blogs, and they added the tab for images, and they added the tabs for um, other uh, other features. And then they also right. started including um, they started including news and, and different features. So mm -hmm. uh, I have a slide there, I believe, where it shows okay, a go. wide variety of of results. All right, let's go ahead and do the next, Laura. There we go. Thank this you. is Blended Universal. So Blended Universal, you can see they have Wikipedia results. Uh, I believe there's some news at the bottom, um, et cetera, et cetera. And it's, it's, it was a much wider variety of results. And that was the first major changes that Google made in their algorithm. Okay. And then next, next. Google Panda. Google Panda. Google Panda. Uh, one of the things that a lot of people complained about is uh, that they would post articles and other companies would rank higher than them um, with their with the article when when the article was uh, was when the article was written. Was their art, their, was a, their owned their owned article? Yeah, their own article. That's right. So whether it was a press release organization or uh, even a blogger, I remember that many times there's a group called Comscore, which produces a, a monthly. Uh, ranking of, of Google and, and the search engines and the market shares. And I used to have my old website, internet-search-marketing.com, and I would do blog posts, and I would just take a snippet from their content, and I would push the blog post out across the Internet. And sometimes I would rank as high as number two or number three in Google for uh, above the original company really? uh, yeah. writing the article about market share. So what yeah. Google did was they, they looked at uh, the, the authorship of content. Uh, they have certain ways of looking at authorship and, and content, and uh, they started penalizing websites for copying content. And Very Google good. Panda has it's, it, it's evolved into uh, I don't know how many different levels. There's a resource on, on the very last page of our presentation, but it, it's, it's gone on and on, and, and used to, there used to be updates about every six or seven months, and you wouldn't really know when an update would come, but it would affect a large percentage of searches. So, a large hmm. percentage, in Google's terms, is three or four percent of searches. And right. people would all of a sudden find that their former rankings were 
were now gone. Wow. wow. And uh, and it continues. In fact, now they just announced last week a a panda update uh, for the first time. They claimed that panda was automatic every month, running around uh, uh, the tenth of the month. But uh, they said there's a new panda. Um, and they're expecting it to slowly impact results over the coming months. Wow, wow. Uh, Daryl, I was going to say, if you can multitask and want to try to reboot and re-log in, we dropped you off of the um, GoToMeeting or the GoToWebinar log. So if you try to log back okay. in, uh, if we see you, we'll try to make you a presenter again. Lori, go I ahead. That's and a great idea. You can keep right, me on the Lori, phone go on ahead. and I can go. Yeah, go ahead okay. and uh, log back in whenever, if you can multitask. Okay, we're now looking at... Oh, yeah, at, that's, not a, that's not a problem. We're looking at Google Penguin now. Yeah, Penguin was probably the uh, most, uh, I'd say it was the most ag aggressive attempt at Google to stop people from spamming the search engines. Uh, I'm not sure if people are very familiar with the term spamming the search engines, but people like myself have been literally manipulating the rankings of the search engines for, uh, well, me personally for 14 years. <laughs> and Google uh, does not want people uh, deliberately manipulating the rankings. They they want uh, fresh, con well, they, I don't want to say fresh content because I don't like to use that word, but they want uh, user quality to be, to be based on the quality of content that people produced not by uh, rigging the search engines or or, or, uh, or jury rigging the search engines. And so Penguin had a huge impact, especially on many SEO firms. Uh, many SEO firms uh, went out of business uh, after the first Penguin, which was about a little over three years ago, mm -hmm. because uh, they weren't aware that Google was going to crack down on various link schemes. And I believe Penguin has had somewhere between uh, three or four updates. And as uh, they have each update, uh, uh, Google gets more and more uh, sophisticated on how they uh, shut down spammers and, and, and people who are trying to manipulate the search engine rankings uh, versus uh, Google you know, doing it their way. I think Google's real purpose, in my opinion, is to get people to use click on Google AdWords ads and not invest oh. <laughs> in SEO. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah very and, and they're very successful because I would tell you the vast, I would say as many as 70 to 80% of the companies that were in the SEO business uh, a number of years ago are no longer in the business. Wow. Wow. All right. Anything else on Penguin? You ready for next? I'm ready for the next slide, and I'm rebooting right. and still not having any success. <laughs> All right. Well, that's okay. Google Knowledge Graph, May 2012. Yeah, the Google Knowledge Graph. I'm sure many of you have seen Knowledge Graphs. If you search for uh, something like Abraham Lincoln, I believe, is that the example there? Thomas Jefferson. Thomas Jefferson, excuse yeah. me. You'll, you'll, you'll get a Knowledge Graph um, on the right. And Google's, uh, in fact, if, can you read uh, what it says there, where, how they gather the information? I think it, it actually Yeah, says it says it provides, that. well, and they've got your slide, structured and detailed information about the topic in addition to the links to other sites. And again, the point is that the, uh, they wanted to try to keep people on this site without having to navigate to other, other sites. So it was kind of aggregating uh, references from these other sites through the Google response page, I presume here. So. That's correct, and, and it's just it's just showing you different. As Google continues to evolve, we're going to see different ways of them to show search results. In fact, uh, I'm going to kind of skip past the slides for a second because uh, it's at, Google's actually even showing search results now where there's nothing to click through to. So in other words, so you, you, you might, stay right on that responded page, whatever the Google you, gives you. So. Yeah. Do you stay right on that responded page that Google gives you? It's 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 a. Uh, some of you might have noticed that already. Uh, all right, I'm somewhat back in. I'm going to pull up my uh, email. Google email. Form, but go ahead. Let's let's continue. Yeah, uh, we're now in the in the news box. This is uh, October 2014 with a website. Shop. Yeah, one of the more recent ones is was was the in the news box, and it's kind of self-explanatory. Uh, and look at the you see the various searches that they highlight there. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Right. What are the, the website maintenance uh, website maintenance services and then uh, 
um, uh, error page note about in the news, in the news for website maintenance. So, yeah, YoS. Yeah, so. it, it, and it's and that, it's that simple. They're 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 at certain types of queries. Uh, uh, for people who are very, this is very technical, but Google has long um, used different types of acronyms and 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 try to look at the in user intent. So, does the user intend to purchase a good? Is the user looking for information? Is the user looking for news? Is the lose? Is the user looking for uh, images? And they're always trying to focus on the best user experience. And this is probably why Google is so successful, mm -hmm. is because they continue to evolve uh, from the standard. Uh, you know, we we have uh, you know just just text listings like they had ten years ago to the variety of listings that they have now. All right, you ready for the next? I'm ready for the next one. All right. Go okay, we're at Mobile Geddon, April twenty fifteen. Yep, and uh I think one of the purposes of this particular presentation is to really talk about the the changes that, that mobile devices have uh, brought uh to our world. Uh, uh they launched Mobile Geddon on April twenty first. Uh and it's a little bit overblown, but not completely overblown. What I think, Chuck, is a little slide that says uh, at the very bottom of that, it says what what is mobile getting right, and right, and and I'll uh, I'll let right you I'll let you try to get back on your system here. But one of the things you'll note is that it does affect the search ranking only if the user is using a mobile device. So again, if if they're searching on a if the user is at their desktop doing a search whether or not your site is mobile friendly or not won't affect the rankings and again i guess tying into the user experience that google's trying to offer to the user but if you look at the examples on here you'll note um the and we'll, we'll give you or daryl will give you in the end of the show a couple of references on how to tell if your site is mobile friendly but basically, when you go into a mobile uh, into a website with a your smartphone, you'll notice that the screen is going to shift and shape to fill the space uh, of your of whatever display you've got. And uh, Lori had an example at a webinar we did earlier on. It's like water filling the shape of a glass. You know, whatever uh, whatever vessel you're using, water will expand or contract and fit within the confines of that vessel and that is what the whole mobile experience uh, what responsive web design uh, on your website uh, will do for you um, and again uh, we talked about uh, if you you can read the bottom of the slide there search result is all languages and it applies to individual pages not websites and so that was kind of the question Daryl um, you know, uh, our ACE web uh, pages now are responsive. So if someone is yep. searching for a class in ACE web, but that the school, the college's website is not responsive, so the fact that where they find the data within ACE web because it's responsive, that would benefit their search ranking, right? That is correct. Right. Okay. All right. Well, that actually, that was one of the questions I've but I've been trying to kind of get at with uh, uh, some customers who might have a non-responsive homepage in their continuing ed unit, but that their ACE Web uh, registration pages are. So that would be still a benefit for them. So, very good. Yep. Any other yeah, comments you want to make on Mobile Geddon before we go to the next slide? I don't think so, except for that I'm just not having any luck getting this computer to, uh, moving forward. So we're just going to go along. And, uh, right. Unfortunately, it's going to impact you, the presentation um, a little bit. There you go. Can you um, can you open a browser? Well, I was going to say in terms of getting you I can't, on for I can't even it, for some reason I can't even open a browser. It's very strange. That open a browser. Well, I was going to say uh, if you wanted to shut down your your audio should continue. If you wanted to actually shut it down and start up again and. Uh, while well, we're 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 letting you do this from from we'll memory, one more time. Which, All right. yeah. which I'm impressed yeah. by the way that you're able to do that. So, Lori, next slide. Well, okay, we're at the three. <laughs> yeah, well, it's, it, we've got it over here. So, Google ranking factors myths. Okay, so you've got the one, two, three on the factors uh, Google ranking myths here. Okay, yep. Yeah, read them off, please. Okay, number one, fresh contact is essential to rank higher. Fresh uh, content is essential to rank higher. 
uh, that, the myth of well, that. Why don't we so, take? A, can you take? Okay, can you take the a poll rest, there. Can you take a poll there and see how many people believe that fresh content is needed to rank higher? Let's go ahead and do the show of hands, Lori. You've got the show of hands tool there. Yep, or do you have a poll for that? No, nope, I have a show yeah, of hands. It can hand. be show of hands. Show of All hands right. is fine. You're, you're probably seeing me scroll through. I'm all seeing you flip back and forth here. So, well, I can do that. I can, I can take everybody's hands down. So, all right. Huh? I'm going oh. to, if you would, raise your hand if you think fresh contact is essential for a good ranking in, in Google. The idea of fresh content. All right. Raise your hand. We got hands. We got a couple of three, four. Uh, not a lot of people are raising their hands. So only a few actually have, have uh, said yes to that. And the answer That's is? That's interesting. Well, the answer, in my opinion, is no. And it's oh, funny that okay. if, if most, peop most people who have been exposed to, I would call them um, sock puppet SEOs, people who don't really have any experience, uh, and they've just tried to become an SEO by through what they've, what they've read rather than yeah. uh, real experience. Uh, there's a lot of people who take that literally and say, "Oh, you need fresh content to rank well." Well, mm -hmm. I, I know I know through my own experience that fresh content is relevant depending on the search query. So if somebody's looking for something that's news related, uh, or 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 something you know to deal with, with news rather than uh, a product or service, then certainly you need fresh content. But if you have a static product or service that doesn't change, there's no reason to create fresh content. So, so the, the next point is, is, the point is really oh, relevant content. Uh, so you're saying on that number one, it's really relevant content is is more important than brand new virgin content, if you would, in the same area. That's correct, and, and yeah. the, the structure of the content is is uh, one of the you know, is the most important thing from a search standpoint. So if we go back to that slide, it's it's structuring your content so that it's relevant to the search. Okay. Engine. All right. Number two is uh, social media is an important ranking factor. And again, okay. so we can skip the. Do you want to do a show of hands, or you just want to kind of give us your thoughts on that? Show of hands. Show of hands. All right. Hands down, everybody. How many people do think that social media is important on that? All right. Raise your hands if you think getting on Twitter and getting on Facebook. Um, all right. Come on. Come on. Get one, two, three. Again, about five, about 25% of the people have said yes on that. Well, it's interesting. It, in terms of actually ranking your site, and so what we're talking about ranking your site at Google, mm -hmm. there is no direct correlation uh, between social signals and saying, oh, we had X amount of people visit like our this. site yeah. from Facebook, or we had X amount of people visit our site from Twitter, uh, Twitter and therefore uh, we had improved rankings. Uh, there, there's no correlation between those social signals and your actual rankings at Google. Wow, wow. Um, all right, number three was clicks and click-throughs mean higher rankings, uh, and I'll let you just kind of respond to that. What, so, yeah, clicks. You think it would? So, you think it would? Well, it, it does when you're it does when you're doing the Google AdWord ads. If everybody's okay. familiar with the ads on the top left and on the right, well, Google rewards advertisers for the more people who click through their ads because they get paid more. Ah. but in terms of the organic rankings, the natural rankings, uh, there is there is no correlation between the amount of time somebody spends on a page of your site, as well as uh, how many times they click through. Wow, wow. All right, you ready for the next slide? I'm ready for the next slide. All right. Next one is new and old rules that work. Google ranking factors you can control. Number one, HTML page title and keywords. Yeah, one of the most important things is the HTML page titles and keywords. And I think the example I use from there is uh, Auburn University. Right, and that's, that I correct? think, in an upcoming slide. That's, uh, you know, it, yeah. do you want to jump okay, to that? So, or do you want to yeah, well, no, there's, there's a, there, I, I actually think I, I list a, a, from the Auburn page, there's a, a, a page title that they have on their page, and right. then I list, an, a, uh, I list a, a better search relevant page title. 
Okay, so we're looking at GMAT test prep, and do you want us to go to the next one over then? And yeah, well, I, I, if, if I, I wish if I, if I had the there control, it is, I would here it is, arrow. current page but, title, yeah. uh, test prep courses, Office of Professional Continuing Ed, and then you've got the second one, and I think this is where you say GMAT test prep course online, semicolon Auburn, Alabama, so that you've yep. got the content or the topic or the product, if you would, of what the student might really be looking for. Um, is right, GMAT and, and that's, test that's prep, the, not that office That was a good example. Right. No, go ahead, Chuck. I'm sorry. No, I was going to say the first part was uh, it said test prep courses stop, Office of Professional Continuing Ed stop, Auburn University. So it was more about the host rather than the content of what it was. So. Yeah, I don't know if we have anybody from the Auburn group here, but it's interesting. Every one of their pages has virtually the same title in their continuing ed department with one minor modification. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, they're a little bit different in the fact that they're, they are Auburn, and the, the Auburn is also the name of the city where the college is located at. But oh. if, you're, if you're not named after the city where the college is located at, uh, then you want to make sure that you have your geography in there. Uh, you also want to make sure that you have uh, online in there. Uh, and uh, what they allow is 60 characters, including spaces. Wow. Okay, Lori, let's roll back to the to the to the five items then, and we're we're checking back to uh, back the other direction, if you would. Um, yeah, and I'm sorry, this computer Lori. is just not cooperating, so we're going to just go what uh, just we're going to go, go with, with it the way we're doing. All right, all right. So, uh, all right, number two is meta description to entice. So I didn't know whether meta descriptions were still relevant or not. Well, yeah, and I give I give an example there. Meta descriptions are still used, and and by the search engines, and very few people write meta descriptions. Mm -hmm. And all I can say is, uh, using Google AdWords ads as a good example, uh, there's a lot of there's some very specific techniques in successful AdWords ads. And when you write a meta description, it should be something like an ad with a call to call to action. So you you present your brand. You present some type of uh, unique selling proposition or some type of selling proposition, and then you present a call to action. And if you do that in 152 characters, you'll actually see that in the search results. So I think hmm. I give an example there on one of my customers uh, who ranks in the top five for uh, storage containers. Los Angeles is one of the is the example that I Let's, show there. Uh, Lori, I think if you tab forward uh, two or three, one, two. Oh, there it is. Right. We're back one, back one. We're, we're, uh, right. All right. Yeah, Los Angeles story. So the Aztec containers, uh, that is a meta description underneath their uh, one of the leading providers, steel storage shipping containers in LA. Call us for a quote. Um, yeah. Oh, there, yep. there's that, your meta description. That's actually a meta description. Yep, that's a meta description. And okay. if you look at, look at the, some of the ones underneath that, uh, they're very non-descriptive, or what Google is doing is they're grabbing snippets off the, mm -hmm. off the page itself. Right. And so it, it leads to something that's very wordy, very, uh, it, it doesn't really sell, it doesn't mo motivate, it doesn't move somebody. So if you have a really nice meta description, and it doesn't take long to write them, uh, and, and you can even have a phone number, call to enroll. Right. All right, Lori, let's go back to, go ahead. Yeah, ahead, yeah no. for, you could say call to enroll, for example, at the very end. Call this exactly. number to enroll. Somebody could actually see your, they could see your search at your your search result, and then they could decide to not even click through. They could, they could, you could have presented it so well and so relevant that they'll just pick up the phone and call. Pick up the phone and call, Lori. Let's go back to our list, so backwards again. So I, I'm giving that uh, that Aztec <laughs> container as an example. Right. Okay, Lori, back to the five. We'll flip back Third to that. Third was internal linking, so I'm going to go with the five. Stay with the example. Internal linking and okay. test prep courses. Okay, you're at the internal linking. Let's go back, I think, to number number three on the list. And uh, Lori, I was going to have you uh, scroll backwards to the, the list of the five tips that Daryl had. Yep, a couple 
couple back, couple back, one more back. All right, number three yeah. was on-page content and keywords. So, yep, on-page content and keywords. Um, you want them to match that HTML page title in the first 150 characters. And, and let's go back and make a note. If you're going to write your own HTML page, page titles, uh, uh, 60 characters, including spaces, is, is now what the search engines have. So you'll see that on the slide presentation. And if you come back and watch this in video, you can see the notes there. Uh, meta description, 152 characters, including spaces. And your on-page content, a very simple way to see what people are searching for is the example that I've given in the slide there. I believe it's, okay. uh, is it pharmacy technician? Yeah, scroll forward, Lori. I think maybe that was the one you were on. Um, let's go one more. T was that test prep internal? No, that was, was that the test prep example? Oh, fa there it is, pharmacy tech. There it is. Yep, How pharmacy technician. A, right, go, but go back to pharmacy tech, Lori. There we go. <laughs> Google results when searching for pharmacy technician use suggested phrases at the bottom of your content, HTML page title and meta description. Um, so yeah. again, some of you might not notice when, when when you do a search for a phrase like what what, is, what was the search phrase there, Chuck? A pharmacy technician course was a search phrase. Ph pharmacy technician course. Almost everybody offers a ph pharmacy technician course. So if you do an actual search at Google. Uh, you go to the bottom of the page, it will give suggestions for phrases that people are using related to that. So the pharmacy technician course is the most general phrase besides pharmacy technician, which is too general. Right. But for a, C, for a CE department, pharmacy technician course, and what are the other derivatives? Can you want to read some of those out, Chuck? Uh, pharmacy course, technician course online, uh, of course, cost. Pharmacy technician course outline, part time, online BC requirements, test dates. So again, the idea and what it, I guess the point here, Daryl, would be that these would be examples of, of phrases that people could put on their uh, page description or in the content of their page to, to yes, put a couple exactly of these what I'm other alternate that's phrases. That's exactly what I'm recommending. And right. so instead of copying, let's say if you're using uh, Ed to go's career training or somebody else's online courses, and they've given you a description. You don't want to copy the description exactly as it appears because you might be penalized with Google Panda. Right, right. So, so what you want right. to do is incorporate the description based on how it relates. You know, incorporate the description, but then take phrases like those that appear there and write them for the end user and think about how this will trigger relevance for the end user. And you'll be surprised when you match your HTML page title and you match your meta description with, a, uh, with some branding, uh, some uh, unique uh, selling propositions and a call to action, and then you use a mix of words that people are actually searching for, Based on these you examples are, you, from Google, yeah. Based on the examples you are, from Google, you are literally generally. creating relevance. That's gotcha. correct. Gotcha. Gotcha. Very good. All right. The next item, and I've got a copy of this, Lori, was on page. Oh uh, no, original content, panda, panda proof. So I yeah, don't know what's what I just. Well, I just I just kind of um, said that. Which you don't you don't want to copy these course descriptions uh, exactly as they appear from vendors or um, or something that's that's can you want to make them your own so that you can avoid uh, being hit by panda because if you're hit by panda you're never going to be in the in the rankings in your local geography and and that's your saying in terms of attempting to pad or uh, stuff stuff content in there so yeah um, Links.edu are the best. That's another uh, factor you can control. Although that actually may be, uh, you're saying uh, links that tie to other edu sites, or if you're marketing to edu. No, my recommendation is, I think uh, if we, I know you're going to have to go back quite a few slides, or or I think I give the example of the content that, as it appeared uh, from that page of the Auburn page. Okay, so they let's have go to the, the phrase, they have they have phraseology there, uh, but they only have one link to uh, 
to their yeah, frequent, to their inter internal chorus. Right. Frequently asked questions live online. Uh, so you're saying if there were links on this description page that went to some EDU um, uh, link that that would help <clears throat> being able to put some other links on a page that's uh, tied well, to we're talking. EDU we're talking. Uh, there's that GMAT. We have the GMAT slide. Yes. I, yes, think I, I think I pulled right. the content out. Okay, so, so it mentions the other courses, GRE, GMAT. Uh, on their page itself, there's no links. You should actually link from that page to the course page using the phrase that describes the page. So where it says GRE, you should use the power of your own website to link from the words GRE to your GRE course. To the GRE course. So Okay. Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, uh, yep, I was going to say. Um, all right, then the other one, the last and not least, and of course the change is the mobile friendliness. Mobile friendliness, so as far as yeah, things you can control. Well, things you can control, I, I uh, basically you need somebody to make sure that they design your site and right. make it mobile friendly, whether it's in-house, whether it's... Uh, uh, whether you have somebody in your CE department that can help you. Uh, right. Chuck, did you want to ask a question about that, in fact? Uh, well, I was going to say, no I, no, I think we're good on that, and we've kind of beat on that already. So let's go ahead and roll on. We've gone through li the linking, internal linking, the mobile-friendly tool. We're at now. This is the slide, Daryl, about the tool that you can tell if your website is mobile-friendly. Um, yep. And again, um, this is the Google Webmasters tool. So, um, yeah. And that, uh, Ed, go ahead, Chuck. Well, and and then again, I would the note for the Aceware users that the new version of Aceweb is now on, is now mobile friendly. So that is something that uh, you might want to consider. So, um, got that. And uh, so I'm going to go ahead and have Lori go on and continue. I think we're getting close to checking for mobile friendliness, which is important. Questions and live examples. So at this point, and now I don't know how, if, can, can you get to a browser? And this is the dilemma. You're not able to log on. So No, I'm not able to, but here's what I can offer. If, uh, although my time difference uh, from people on the East Coast is 12 hours and people from the West Coast is 15 hours, anybody who's willing to have a small tutorial late in the day on the West Coast or um, you know 8 or 9 o'clock in the morning on the East Coast, uh, send me an email, and I will be glad to give uh, anybody a short 15-20 uh, minute uh, tutorial at no charge to to look at their own website and see how they can make the changes. And if they go back through these notes here and and, and get a copy of the presentation or right. watch the video, I think they'll they'll get more tips. Uh, but I, if you, I also uh, there's also a guide to on-page optimization. In the, right. Uh, if you go ahead and let's go to the, uh, we're going to get into questions in a minute, but go ahead, Lori, and um, uh, and uh, go to the resource page, and people can kind of look at it while we're uh, we're doing some Q and A. I'm assuming you've got some questions that have stacked up while we've been going through here. So uh, we're at the resources page, and uh, Lori, wh what kind of questions are people asking that we can kind of do with? Um, uh, Daryl being blind on this end, but uh, at least being able to respond to general questions about perhaps SEO. Uh, one big question, how do search engines handle video? Video and its impact on SEO. Yeah, that's a great question. You know, and video really is coming to play um, huge. Um, and, and you're seeing more and more videos. You know, I wouldn't call it. It's really kind of universal results. You're seeing more and more videos uh, coming into play. It seems to me the the two that I see the most rankings of, of course, is a as a, a Google property, uh, YouTube, and then you do see more and more rankings of Vimeo. And I think there's some very good tutorials. Uh, uh, if you're gonna put videos up, uh, I think the best methodology is to put them up on YouTube, create your own YouTube channel, and then uh, there are some very simple tutorials, um, in fact, on YouTube that will teach you how to put keywords into uh, your various videos, and not into the videos themselves, but into the description of the video, kind of like we're talking about uh, it, your on-page optimization of your course. 
Right. Now, for those of you that don't know, Daryl, uh, in the group, uh, YouTube is owned by Google, right? So I think Google correct. likes Google likes to see things on YouTube. Let me just ask a quick question. How many of you out there have YouTube channels or have a YouTube site for your institution? Raise your hand if you've got a YouTube site. And Lori, while they're raising their hand, uh, what's the next question? Uh, people asking to schedule time with Daryl, and I would. Okay, and we've got, <laughs> you've got Daryl's uh, contact info right here on the resource slide. Uh, we will post this on our webinar archive uh, area um, so that um, you will have that. But if you wanted to get DarylClark29 at gmail.com, that, uh, uh, that will get you. And, of course, Daryl Clark Associates' his website. Any other kind no, of questions? No, it's, not it's D, D. Clark Associates. D. Clark. D. Clark, D. Clark Associates. Yeah, it's, that's, uh, that's what it says on your form. You're good. You're good. That, 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 yeah, but, and that's, uh, I, I don't think we want to uh, skip, rush over the uh, mobile-friendly tool, though, because it's kind of right. cool. If you do a search for Google's mobile-friendly tool, just search at Google, Google's okay. mobile-friendly tool, and then you can put any URL of your uh, internal uh, site or or any site you want. Uh, if you have friends who have websites and you want to see if their websites are mobile friendly, uh, right. you can uh, use that tool to find any page or any website uh, and it'll show you mm -hmm. in about uh, 20 to 60 seconds whether the, wow. whether the site is wow. mobile friendly. Cool, cool. Lori, how are we doing uh, on questions? Does the number of times a keyword appear on the page affect its ranking? That's a good question. Uh, you know, in the past, they call it keyword stuffing, uh, and uh, my answer to you would be no, uh, not really. My standard rule of thumb is uh, have that have the two most important phrases appear in the front of the HTML page title, um, and then have them appear once or twice in the body content. Uh, no, no more, no more than three times in the in the body content. You really want to write your content for the end user. Uh, and, and not, you know, you want to write for the search engines to send the triggers of relevance, but and, and so you want to put them in the right places, but you don't want to be, you know, keyword spammy because it 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 doesn't really, you know, it's not going to hurt you, but it's not going to help you. It's going to be more annoying to the user when they see the same keyword, pharmacy technician, yeah, pharmacy, pharmacy technician, pharmacy technician, pharmacy, pharmacy technician, pharmacy technician, pharmacy technician, pharmacy technician pharmacy, yeah, yeah. Um, very good, Lori. Any other kind of questions? How are we doing? We wrapping do things search, up. Social media sites appear in search results. So if you have a Facebook page and somebody searches, does that Facebook page come up in social media results? I'm. You mean come up in Google results? I'm seeing more yeah. and more uh, Pinterest sites and seeing more and more Facebook sites coming up in, in the search results. So uh, I'm certainly not an expert in optimizing a Pinterest page or a Facebook page. Uh, but it's amazing the kind of stuff people put on YouTube, uh, mm -hmm. as well as if you just do searches for, uh, you know, how to how to get my my Facebook page more visibility in Google. Uh, you you might find some good tips there, and usually it is based on uh, the descriptions, short descriptions and long descriptions that you've written about your page. But uh, okay. yes, um, Facebook pages and, and Pinterest pages in particular rank, and they say that. Uh, more and more uh, Twitter, um, more and more tweets are going to start showing up, is what mm. they say. Mm. Interesting. Lori, how are we doing? Questions? We getting? I think we're about in? done with questions, except people Very wanting good. to know if we're going to post the the slides. And yes, we will. Yep. Yep. Right. On our webinar archive page, and people wanting to talk directly with Daryl, and I refer them to his email address and phone number. Very good, very good. We're well, Daryl, I appreciate you're a you're a trooper to to hang with us here. We're we're uh, you know fighting a new laptop here, uh, but I appreciate yeah, yeah. your I, 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 yeah. good news for everybody is my laptop will be back tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> You'll be back into the normal routine. I'm with you. I'm with you. So yeah, yeah. we sure appreciate all the work you've done on this. And again, um, uh, your offer to help out. I will tell you that again. One of the other. I mentioned in the in the first place, and again, that Daryl does do consulting on SEO optimization. If you do some need some serious help, and he also can help with building or modifying web pages. If you've got a site that you want uh, that you have control over, obviously, if you're in an institution 
Uh, you might have a webmaster who controls it from above, but if you've got control of your own site and don't have the, the, the wherewithal to do your own modification, uh, that is also a service Daryl does. So. Yeah, Very right good. now we're, 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 we're averaging you know, about $500 to take a, a, a multi-page website and make it uh, mobile friendly. So mobile friendly. Normal, All normal, right. our normal turnaround, normal turnaround time on that is about five business days. Okay. Very good. That gives you kind of a general idea. Uh, Lori, again, thank you for putting this together and taking over the presentation mode. And it, uh, it's kind of like yes. a webinar built by a team. And so we appreciate everybody hanging around. Thanks for coming. Um, good luck with getting your SEO going. And again, you've got resources here and with Daryl uh, to try to help you out. So, Daryl, you have a okay, good thanks, evening. Thanks, Lori and Chuck, for, for having me. No, just thanks for having me. Sorry for. I, I did have these fears that uh, this would happen with this <laughs> with laptop, but it seems like everybody got something out of the presentation, and I appreciate everybody giving me your time this morning. Very good. All right, everybody have a good day. Enjoy that good weather wherever you're at, and um, uh, let's go uh, get some courses sold. Bye-bye, everybody.